Okay, so welcome everybody for our weekly seminar series at the Department of Marine Geosciences. We're very happy to host our own um, uh, member of our academic uh, uh, staff, uh, Dr. Regina Kratzman. So some information about Regina. Regina completed his, her master and PhD uh, studies in civil engineering at the Technion in Israel and two postdocs at uh, the National Research Council of Canada and the Institute for Research and Construction and the at and, the, uh, and at Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel. Uh, she is a faculty member of the Department of Marine Geosciences at the University of Haifa and the head of the Laboratory of Computational um, Physics in Marine Sciences. Her research is focused on development of advanced numerical models and theoretical solutions for a wide range of problems in the field of earth sciences in which a non-linearity and interplay between different scales and parameters take place. So again, thank you very much, Regina, for accepting to uh, give a talk in our home seminar. And, um, and today she is going to, um, to show us uh, her study entitled The Lifetime of Meat and Bubble in Muddy Aquatic Sediments. So Regina, the podium is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Nicolas. Uh uh, so hello everyone. Uh, the title of the of the talk uh, is "Lifetime of Mist and Bubble in Muddy Aquatic Sediment." Uh, I will present today an overview on my several projects that I performed uh, with my colleagues and students uh, during approximately ten years, uh, focusing on missing bubble. And here you can see also the missing bubble, which is a symbol of my lab. So, uh, a gazi sediment abund abundantly found worldwide is a source of a permanent concern due to their contribution to sediment dest destabilization, air pollution, and global warming. So, here you can see in this picture. Uh, as a, a gas layer. I don't... Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, and, go ahead. Uh, okay, and this gas layer is actually composed of uh, separate bubbles. Uh, and these bubbles are discrete bodies of emissible gas in the surrounding media. So these bubbles live in a community. And that means actually that the dynamics of the bubbles, of each single bubble, defines a macroscopic gas behavior. Uh, so uh, this, I will focus uh, on the bubbles in the muddy aquatic sediments. And what are these sediments? Uh, the, their general characteristics are that these sediments are uncemented, clay bearing, which means that they are cohesive, fine grained, and opaque. So uh, this opacity, the opacity of mass uh, of mud, uh, significant, significantly impeded their characterization and the characterization, of course, of missing bubbles in these muddy sediments. Uh, three uh, relatively recent experimental developments allow it uh, to collect uh, considerable information about gas bug bubbles in the, inside these opaque mats. First method was the application of X-ray computer tomography of OCT scanning to view bubbles single bubbles within natural sediment samples. Second method uh, is uh, a macro scale acoustic imaging of gas sediment that permitted the general characterization at the scale beyond the single bubble. And the last one was uh, single bubble growth ex experiments in the lab sediment samples and in gelatin which is a transparent muddy sediment sulfate that allowed obtaining inf information about the bubble parameters. 
So in general, uh, here I will describe uh, different types of the bubbles in the different sediments according to a famous uh, classification of Anderson. So here you can see in yellow the grains, in blue the water, and gas is in red. So in, in coarse green sediments, you can find mainly type one bubbles, which are small and share a common porous space with water. Uh, type two bubbles fill the void sp space between a number of grains, but displace only a poor water between a number of these grains. And, and finally, uh, sediment displacing bubbles, like those big bubbles, displace not only the poor water, but also displace the sediment grains. And those are dominant uh, kinds of the bubbles in muds, in fine-grained muds. So in order to compare the bubbles in coarse-grained sands and fine-grained muds, you can see an example of the city scan of the core. This is a core with intercalated layers of sand uh, in white and mud in dark uh, gray, where you can see actually that bubbles in sands are small and spherical, and bubbles in muds are much bigger and similar to can be described as oblate spheroids. So, um, as I said previously, there were um, experiments in lab experiments on bubble growth in sediment samples that you can see here. Uh, in uh, yellow, you can see again the core of mud, and this one is a straw and gases injected and bubble grows. Uh, sorry, uh, bubble grows uh, initially at the, be at the beginning of their growth. They uh, first fill the pore space and that, that the initial occupy, and then they start deforming the sediment skeleton. Here, for instance, you can see the mature big bubble of the, of the plane size of about five centimeters by seven centimeters. And approximately with this dimension, dimension this bubble can mi migrate in mats uh, towards the sediment water interface. So uh, here I, I will describe uh, the main processes that affect the methane bubble growth and migration and the entire life cycle actually of the missing bubble within muddy sediment. Uh, you can see here missing, dissolved missing concentration uh, from the pictures from this source versus depths. Uh, and uh, let's look on this curve of the dissolved missing concentration. So what are these processes that affect uh, missing bubble uh, life cycle. Uh, first two processes are microbial mediated methane production, methanogenesis, and consumption, methanotrophy. For instance, here you, the methanogenesis um, uh, takes place somewhere here, and methan methanotrophy here below the sediment water interface. Uh, those are bi biogeochemical processes. Phase transition between gaseous and aqueous phases. For instance, if you look at this curve, then in this region, uh, dissolved methane concentrations exceed the solubility concentrations. That means that um, bubble. May nucleate uh, under this dissolved missing concentration to the specific the name, dimensions and the shape. Uh, these bubbles can migrate upward, driven by buoyancy, towards the sediment water interface. 
So those are the main, uh, the main uh, processes. Um, I must say that it is known that uh, much of the free shallow gas near the sediment water interface is generated by the microbial, microbial decomposition of organic mat matter, which is a biogenic methane. However, there can be other sources of methane bubbles, such as thermogenic methane and methane hydrides. So um, I will focus mainly on the, this type of the bubbles. So um, in addition to these main processes, it is clear that there should be some kind of the mechanical interaction of, of the bubbles because these bubbles are big. It should be some kind of the mechanical interaction of these bubbles, this muddy sediment. And you can see here the uh, results on the bubble growth in months in course. Those are the cross section of the course. When bubbles grew up and migrated towards uh, uh, the, the surface of this core and released from this course. And when they released, uh, what they left footprints, which are seen as big localized fractures. So uh, from this and other laboratory simulations on, on bubble growth in mass in gelatin, it can could be inferred that muddy sediments do not respond mechanically either as a fluid or as a plastic solid on bubble growth, growth but rather as fracturing elastic solids despite the fact that mats are in, in are very soft uh, materials. So uh, in order to confirm actually this hypothesis that mats in their relation to the bubbles are fracturing elastic solids rather than a plastic solid, for instance, or fluid, uh, flu fluids, Okay, um, additional experiments were performed on measuring internal bubble pressure as bubbles grew. So it's very similar experiments. Here you can see these two pictures, where you see the uh, development of the bubble pressure. Uh, left picture on the months, there is experiments in months and right picture or the, uh, on the experiments in the transparent gelatin. And what you can see in these pictures uh, is that this pressure pattern exhibits, uh, this pressure exhibits a sotus pattern. And uh, this pattern is actually expected if tested sediment responds to an increment of pressure in an elastic manner. So you can see when gas is injected, you can see the elevation in the pressure increment. But after then, it, after the end of this increment, it falls by fracturing. So um, this uh, sotus pattern cannot be associated neither with plastic nor with fluid-like material response. So, and um, as such, the mechanical assumption of this theory of the bubble grows uh, is uh, the following one. The bubble size proportions and rheological mud response suggest that bubble grows elastic fracture mechanics theory and bubbles themselves that you can see here, big bubbles, even compared to the size of the core where the bubbles are injected as mod one cracks. So um, there are uh, in year sciences, for insta instance, there are also other systems at the different scales where fluid flow, such as gas in the case of bubbles, is accompanied by fracturing. For instance, hydrofracturing, magma emplacement and dikes propagation, and low permeability rock 
of charging, which is also uh, uh, also due to some uh, uh, fluid uh, propagation in the rock. So last theoretical question is actually why does this happen that this uh, missing gas bubble uh, generates fractures in the mass. So what we have here actually in our case, we have a two fluid system where in the pore, pore space you have gas and you have a uh, water and the pressure into two is different, which is also seen from this, from the curvature of this inter interface. And um, this actually difference in the pressure to two sides of this uh, interface um, defy, the, uh, the propagate, defines a law of the gas phase propagation. More specifically, a gas phase, for instance, may advance to the next pore if the, its difference with uh, pressure within the, within the water exceeds a capillary entry pressure. This is like a na name of uh, this pressure. And this is the formula for this pressure. You can see from here that here is a dependence on some constant which uh, is which characterizes the coexistence of these two phases and named interfacial tension, which is constant, and the grain radius. In a case when a great a grain size is big, uh, just a moment. In a case when the uh, grain size is big, so you can see that uh, this expression is very small, and then gas easily invades into the pore space uh, by a capillary invasion. But in, in the opposite case, such as uh, fine, in fine grained uh, mats, this grain size is very small and then this expression is very big and then gas pressure should be much, much bigger than the water pressure. And then gas invades into the uh, solid matrix with some, uh, such a big pressure that it breaks a cohesion between the grains and propagates as a localized fracturing. So this is the reason actually why you see um, in months uh, the localized fractures. So this is uh, the theoretical background, okay? And uh, now I will, I, will, uh, I will come to the actual knowledge gaps. Um, uh, uh, actually, a uh, single bubble lifespan dynamics, its controlling factors, its fate in sediment and chances to es escape to the water column, eventually predetermine, predetermine the macroscopic gas behavior in sediment. So uh, these factors are very difficult to understand from the behavior of a macroscopic gas volume. So, and that is actually what is missing. And because bubbles are, are just the players in this scenario and coexist uh, within a community of the similar bubbles, this is why all these factors is much more convenient to study um, uh, on, a, on, a, on an example of a single bubble. So in this case, numerical modeling benchmarked again the existing experiment and observations helps us to cover, to cover this knowledge gap. So uh, in general, there are two stages of the bubble lifespan, uh, stage one, um, bubble grows from the shaped seed to final elliptic mature configuration with closed tail, 
that you can see here. This is a mature configuration with the closed tail in the shape of the inverted teardrop. And second stage, which is bubble rise towards the sediment water interface driven by boils, buoyancy. I will focus on this presentation only on stage one. And those are the objectives to explore various aspects of missing bubble growth within muddy aquatic sediments. And I will focus on three very different uh, aspects related to the bubble growth stage. First one is an effect of muddy sediment mechanical properties on the bubble growth characteristics. Second one is an effect of sediment anisotropy on the, on the bubble shape. And the third one is bubble growth under the, under the surface wave effect. So um, the, all the studies were performed, performed with uh, modeling. Uh, this is the modeling geometry where a bubble, initial bubble seed is modeled as a small penny-shaped crack, this one, this one, with one of, of its surfaces placed on the symmetry place, uh, plane of the sediment box. This is a sediment box. So here you can see a 2D, 2D view of this crack. This is crack front. This is uh, bubble tail, bubble head, bubble equator, and this is a 3D of the script. So this is a geometry. Uh, and the, again, the assumptions for the modeling are the linear elastic fracture mechanics that governs the mechanical response of sediment to the bubble growth. Main parameters, which is very important, are a fracture toughness, a measure of easy of breaking the bonds in muddy sediment. The bonds are electrostatic, organic, water-based, and others. And the Young's modulus, a measure of material elasticity. Second um, main process is missing solute transport to the growing bubble. Uh, main parameters, diffusion coefficient and effective porosity. So I will show you equations, uh, some of the equations, and I will just, just describe them in uh, very general. This is the solute conservation, conservation equation within a porous media that um, has a diffusive term and source strengths of missile production. Uh, this is a force equilibrium equation, including the gravity, again, within the sediment. This is a very important equation of conservation of gaseous methane within the bubble. So you can see here that this is a gas mass within the bubble. So the rate of change of gas mass depends on the diffusive flux towards the bubble. So this is the diffusive flux of the uh, dissolved methane. This is a gradient of the, of the concentrations and the bubble, bubble surface. This is effective porosity and diffusion, diffusive coefficient. And actually, while integrating on the bubble surface, you would have a total diffusive flux to the bubble and the, um, and the rate of change of uh, gas within the, within the bubble. Next important equation is the bubble pressure um, within, within the bubble, which is connected to the concentration of gas uh, within the same bubble. And, and last um, thing, a parameter um, which is used for the fracturing component. Uh, this is a stress intensity factor that indicates the intensity of the straight field, stress field at the bubble front. This is bubble front. Okay, if the maximal stress intensity factor is larger than some critical value, then fracturing uh, proceeds. So now I will go, this is the model, okay? Um, now I will go to the results. 
Uh, first of all, in this paper, uh, some basic things and basic parameters were verified. So here you can see, <coughs> uh, sorry. <clears throat> Here you can see evolution of uh, the pressure and the bubble growth. So you can see uh, compared to the uh, injection experiment, you can see the same SOTUS pattern. And also in both cases, you can see a gradual, a gradual decrease in this internal bubble pressure when it, it grows. So what is the reason actually for the decrease in this pressure also in this experiment, in this simulation and in this experiment is because you can see this is the initial seed, bubble grows mostly upwards, whereas the gravity effect is smaller. And that is actually the main reason when in both cases, the pressure decreases. Then, um, how the bubble size and shape evolves. It evolves with fracturing increments, which are calculated according to this formula. And what you can see actually that for the small seed, the fracture increment is the same. Also the bubble head here and also the bubble tail here. But this, this time it stays the same at the bubble head and drops to zero as a bubble tail. Um, and that uh, actually when it drops to zero, it means that the bubble becomes mature in the shape, closes its tail uh, and uh, its, its shape is, can be approximated as, can be described, be described as an inverted teardrop. And with this uh, shape, it starts and size, it starts migrating upward. So those, those are just the initial verifications and comparison. And here is a simulation. So a simulation was conducted and actually the uh, bubble shape with like inverted te teardrop was produced. But what, and the simulation was conducted with, sorry, with this fracture toughness, 200 Pascal by, by, by square meter. And what is interesting that actually the, the shape is completely correct, but the size is very big. The size of this bubble is about 13 centimeter. So in, it was unclear actually why this simulated bubble is so big. Okay, and now I will discuss the, the reasons and other issues as well. So the discussion on this uh, kind of the simulations. So as you know, and as I discussed previously that bubbles are uh, important methane carrier to the atmosphere because bubbles in contrast to the dissolved methane can bypass oxidation in the upper sedimentary layer to their fast rise velocity. And a portion of the methane uh, the, then bubbles release to the water column and um, advance, advance within the water and part of the methane is dissolved. And this dissolved uh, methane the, this gas loss in the water column uh, depends uh, pri primarily on the bubble size. So if to approximate this stuff, then uh, this large bubble that was simulated, it's equivalent spherical radius, radius of the equivalent sphere of the same volume is 11 millimeter. And uh, the simulations were performed under the water depths of 26 meter. So this bubble would bring more of its initial, uh, more than 90% of its initial methane to the atmosphere. In contrast, if the bubble is smaller, then under the same 26 meter water depths, the bubble, for instance, of five millimeter equivalent radial size would bring only 50% of its initial emission to the atmosphere. However, 
uh, uh, this use of uh, city uh, uh, bu maximal bubbles that were found in the, for instance, in the muddy sediments of the Eckenford Bay were like up to five millimeter of the equivalent radius. But uh, so our bubble that we here simulated was much deeper. And the simulation was performed uh, under the uh, fracture toughness of 200, 200 suggested in the literature. So, and it is seen that there is some dis discrep discrep discrepancy. And it is actually known that muds are a very soft material. And it can be actually suggested that conventional lab measurements of fracture toughness are less applicable for soft muds. So this is conclu conclusion. And uh, the following study was performed. And uh, several, all, again, additional bubbles were simulated. Maximal fracture toughness was 100. And also some smaller values were taken. And you see also the simulated uh, mature bubbles. Uh, in this study, also some uh, analytical solutions were developed for the inner bubble pressure, for instance, for the bubble vertical semi-height, and you can see here good uh, agreements between the numerical and analytical solutions. And for instance, for the opening. So what you can see even, even also from these new simulations and also from that fracture toughness, this parameter, that I will repeat this again, the parameter that defines the strength of cohesion between the grains in mats. And this cohesion can be of the different kinds, okay? Fracture toughness significantly affects the mature bubble shape and size. For instance, this is a vertical semi-height and you see here the structure toughness, and this is the opening, which is a function of this semi-height. So, um, and you can see that small fracture toughness here is responsible for the development of small flat bubbles. When the larger, under the larger fracture toughness, the bubbles are much bigger and much more inflated. Okay, so another, this is a comparison of the numerical and analytical solutions, and you see here a good agreement between the solutions. Another um, parameter is the surface area ratio. Uh, surface area ratio is uh, the ratio of the surface area of the actual simulated bubble to that of the equivalent spherical bubble. And what you can see here, uh, this uh, in pink, you can see bubbles simulated at the fracture toughness of 100. And this is the bubble in the weak sediment and the fracture toughness of, of 30. So you can see that at the smaller fracture toughness, bubble shape deviates more significantly from the spherical configuration than compared to the larger bubble. Uh, and that happens during the entire period of the bubble draws. So discussion, uh, equivalent spherical radii of the bubbles modeled at the entire range of the prescribed fracture toughness. Uh, finally, in contrast to the previous study that I demonstrated, agree with those measured at the muddy sediments of the Eckenford Bay, ranging between these sizes and also in other places. This indicates the ranges of the fracture toughness of the muddy sediment that are not easy to measure by the convent conventional measurements procedures. 
Um, also, this uh, also uh, the in this um, measurements in the Eckenford Bay, the surface area ratio was also um, uh, uh, measured, and it agrees quite well with this result that you can see here. So this is actually the, uh, uh, the conclusion regarding the values of this parameter fracture toughness. With respect to this surface area ratio, um, a bigger surface area ratio for bubbles formed, formed under the smaller fracture toughness result in their increased sensitivity to the ambient solution, the solution field. Uh, that would actually induce their faster growth and smaller uh, in this and uh, faster dissolution be below the sediment water interface. That means that bubbles under the smaller uh, fracture toughness would be more sensitive to sensitive to the ambient uh, solute field. So these are these two papers. And here, this issue elaborated even more. This is a paper, uh, a new paper, which is in review currently, where the role of each mechanical parameters is tracked and uh, uh, analyzed during the entire period of the uh, bubble growth. So if you go back to the basics, of, um, of the linear elastic fracture mechanics that it can be uh, derived that actually there is a proportionality between this fracture toughness and, and Young's modulus, which is a modulus of elasticity. And it is actually of this scaling of this uh, order of magnitude for months. So um, we took here uh, these values, these characteristic values, and allowed uh, in order to understand the role, uh, the physical role of, its, of each parameter, we allowed these values to vary slightly, okay, and perform the simulation. So here you can see on the left chart, you can see the, and also on the right chart, you can see evolution of the bubble pressure this time when uh, during the bubble growth with under the variability in the fracture toughness. And here is the variability in the Young's modulus. Uh, in both charts, what you can see, you can see that as anticipated, the pressure decreases this time for, for all the model case uh, for a, all the modeled cases because bubble grows preferentially upwards. Uh, second stuff that you can see that you can see the opposite trends. Inner bubble pressure decreases faster in a sediment with smaller K, but with larger E. You can see that this is a smaller K and this is the situation with larger Young's modulus. However, the reasons for that are completely different. So uh, I said previously that this is a very important relation between the bubble inner pressure and the concentration of gas in the bubble. So you can see that actually there's a smaller toughness. The pressure, of course, is smaller. And the flux into the bubble is bigger because the concentration on the bubble so surface is smaller. Then the gradient is bigger. And that is why this bubble grows faster, OK? The situation is completely different in a case of different young modules. If you can compare these two insets, you can see that stiffer sediment produces the smaller pressure drops here and the shorter solute absorption stages. 
And that is why actually the, the bubble in the steeper sediment grows faster. So these reasons are completely different. And this is actually the picture. So this is also the, the dependence of the pressure, uh, this variability of uh, fracture toughness and this variability in Young's modulus, but as a function of a distance toward the top of the sediment. So bubble grows and its center just moves upwards and uh, this, this defines this difference uh, between to the top of the sediment box. So what you can see also the analytical solution was developed for this pressure evolution. Okay, the numerical, you can see here also the numerical and also the analytical solution. So what you can see, it was uh, just very un unexpected but it is confirmed uh, completely by this analytical solution that inner bubble pressure at fracturing is the same at each spe special location L of the center of the grown bubble at fracturing at each specific K. So if you look at this specific K, it means that when bubble grows at each it, its position, you would have the same bubble pressure. And it was not anticipated, but this is what the numerical simulation yields. And this is also, you see a very good agree agreement with analytical solution. And this is a very good result actually. That uh, again, at each, uh, because at, at fracturing at each location of the bubble, it would have the same pressure, okay? Uh, the situation would differ between the different properties of sediment, the fracture toughness. But if you can look again into this formula, you would see that there is no dependence on the young, young modulus. Actually, that means that this pressure completely does not depend on the young modulus, only on the fracture toughness. So those are very important results. Uh, the actually define the diffusive flux to the bubble. That these opposite trends in the total diffusive flux are observed. You can see the faster the faster uh, diffusive flux for the smallest fracture toughness and for the biggest uh, Young's modulus. Okay, and those are actually due to the opposite trends in the bubble pressure that actually induce a, a smaller concentration on the bubble uh, surface and thus, and then the larger flux. So uh, discussion, uh, this first point of the discussion is related to the bub mature, uh, bubble shape and size as a function of these mechanical properties. First of all, from the analytical solution, it can be see that, seen that uh, bubble semi height is proportional to the fracture toughness. So bubbles are bigger, you can see here, bubbles are big, bigger in the stronger sediment, sediments. Uh, it's opening, is proportional to the relation between the fracture toughness and Young's modulus and to the additional contribution of this fracture toughness. And finally, the inverse aspect ratio, which is the ratio of uh, bubble semi-opening to semi-height is also proportional to this relation but also inversionally, inversion, uh, inversionally proportional to the fracture toughness. So physically, what all these things mean, especially this thing, that the analytical numerical solutions well explain a growth of flat, long elliptic bubbles in deep sediments and small, more spherical bubbles in shallow sediments. 
and uh, because of the large surface area, long flat bubbles in the deeper sediments have a bigger sensitivity to the solute supply. So this is actually one, one point of the discussion. Another point of the discussion is because bubbles coexist in a community, implications for competitive bubble growth. So here you can see those are fracture toughness uh, values. Here are the bubble surfaces in blue and uh, adjacent, you can see the field of the depleted concentrations as they grow. So what you can see that depleted concentration areas for the bubbles are larger uh, in sediments with larger fracture toughness. That, of course, may affect a growth or competitive growth of the adjacent bubbles. So this is the second um, uh, point of the discussion. And now I will go to completely another subject also related to the bubble growth. So uh, this is a subject of uh, influence of anisotropy and mechanical properties of muddy sediment on the missing bubble draws the direction and migration pattern. So um, in some geological settings and in laboratory experiments, in, in, um, instead of the vertical bubbles that are mostly found in the aquatic sediments in muds, uh, sediments, in some of them, sediments have shown to host horizontal bubbles. For instance, here in the laboratory experiments of Louis, you can see only the horizontal bubbles of missing bubbles. So, and there is no clear, there was no clear theory to explain uh, actually this difference why in some, in some cases you have only some vertical or vertical bubbles and in others the bubbles only the horizontal ones. So, but on the other hand, hand it is known that MADS makes inhibit a transverse, a transver, transverse anisotropy related to partial or full alignment of plate-like uh, plate uh, clay particles. Uh, having radial, radial symmetry along the axis no, normal to the bedding plane. So, and this study actually explores the effect of anisotropy in, in mechanical properties of muddy sediment on bubble growth direction. So, and here are the results. Uh, first of all, uh, the anisotropy ratio is defined as a ratio of fracture toughness in the vertical direction to that in the horizontal directions, having these values, one uh, corresponds to the isotropic case. So in the case of the isotropic sediment, bubbles uh, are, are vertical and uh, start they are as, as vertical ascent by when they close their tail. Their tail. But in contrast, under the increasing measure of anisotropy, like here, you can see horizontal bubbles dominate, uh, characterized also by decreasing aspect ratio. You see that uh, these uh, bubbles have a smaller vertical dimension. So in addition, additional result here is also the inner pressure pattern you can see that this inner pressure actually decreases with an increasing anisotropy ratio. And an additional important point is uh, an increase in surface to volume ratio uh, of a bubble grow, grown in anisotropic sediment. For instance, this is a uh, surface to volume ratio for an anisotropy ratio of 2.5, which actually enhances again the sensitivity of the bubble to the ambient solution field. 
So um, here this discussion is also very important. So literally, so this is actually to our opinion is the anisotropy, which uh, is uh, uh, primarily related to the uh, anisotropy of the shape of mud, uh, uh, shape uh, a plate-like clay particles. So this actually may, uh, may generate these horizontal bubbles. And uh, additional uh, implications that laterally oriented bubbles may coalesce forming an intercollected permeable gas horizons and networks or observed in some uh, laboratory experiments. Um, Anisotropy-led lateral bubble growth also plays an important role in accumulating gas reserve from long distances around large and small uh, scale stationary outlets like vents and poke marks in the aquatic sediments. In contrast to vertical bubbles, horizontal bubbles tend to be stationary thus being responsible for, for high gas storage capacity of the sediments. So I will give you an example, for instance, uh, in the field, gas content uh, ranges up to several percent, while in the laboratory, in, in, uh, in, in the lab, for instance, in the experiments, in this experiment, uh, maximum maximal gas content was um, about 20%. So then actually the development of these horizontal bubbles increases very significantly the uh, gas retention. Uh, under the sufficient solute supply, mature bubbles in both isotropic and anisotropic sediments may start their vertical uh, rise by fracturing the ambient muddy sediment. So those are the main implications. So um, the last point that actually I would like you to show them, growth me mechanism of bubbles under the waves. So um, it is known that aquatic sediments experience fluctuating loads due to passages of surface wave, waves induced by winds or storm, storms, swells, tides, etc. So in the field, um, the ebullition was correlated to the appearance of the waves. For instance, this is the data from the Lake Gatun where you can see that under the low wind speed, you can see a small uh, gas flux, but under the higher wind speed, you can see much bigger uh, gas flux. So, but this data is actually related um, to the Ebullition to the gas. Uh, continuous persistence, or like here, four to six hours, can suggest an evidence for the permanent accelerated bubble growth up to their mature sizes and then their continuous release so that this uh, wave e effect is related not only to the ebullition, but it can also produce an accelerated bubble growth. So, um, and here's the question, how do the surface waves affect the bubble growth? And here is the mechanism, this is a general mechanism. Uh, in very general, uh, you can see here, here the um, evolution uh, fluctuation of the hydrostatic flow and the bubbles react to these changes in the hydrostatic load, rectifying their sizes and adjusting their inner pressure. 
So you can see here like biggest bu bubble sizes under the low waves and smaller sizes under the highest hydrostatic load. So in addition to changes, this, this bubble pressure uh, affects, affects the diffusion, uh, uh, methane diffusion to a growing bubble from the ambient sediment. So what are actually the main processes that affect bubble growth under the waves compared to the bubble growth under the no waves? You can see evolution and what you can see here in blue is evolution of the pressure. Uh, so, so evolution of the stress intensity factor under the waves. And green, it is the here in these two curves, you can see two issues. Uh, first of all, you can see early fracturing when uh, the, under the wave tone. And second thing, you can see, excuse me, there is some, some noise. If, uh, if it is possible to close the, the microphone. Okay, thank you very much. So what you can see, you can see two processes that, that differ bubble draws under waves from that under no waves. So, is early fracturing when the, the bubble under the wave trough. And the second one is intense multiple fracturing close to the wave trough. So what's, what does this stuff cause? It causes early and multiple fracturing, causes uh, the bubble to attain a larger surface area under the waves and a larger total diffusive flux that compared to the case of no waves. And this is how, uh, this is what, this causes the accelerated bubble growth. So in this case, um, the, the contrast in time of bubble growth in case with the under waves to no waves was evaluated as a function of the mean water depth wave period and the uh, ratio of the wave amplitude to the water depth. So and here are the results. So I will just describe them verbally. Okay, here that for instance, at 18 meter water depth, the bubble under, under waves grew up uh, by 3% faster than under no waves, compared, for instance, to the bubble under two meter water depths. So the difference was 10%. And under half a meter water depths, the difference was 30%. So why does this happen? What's the, what is the mechanism? What is the effect of the water depths? Uh, mm, it is the following. Bubbles in deeper water ha have a higher inner pressure. And this, as also previously, increases solute, uh, uh, solute concentration at the bubble surface, and thus this decreases the total diffusive flux. And uh, this, this is... Um, the solute, uh, as a result, uh, Nissan solute required to induce the next fracturing increment accumulates in a larger number of the wave periods. And that is why the bubble grows under the wave grows faster. So the effect of the wave period, you can see here, this is a period of three seconds. This is a period of 50 seconds. And you can see that smaller period waves ex, uh, uh, expedite the bubble growth more. So why does this happen? 
because for short wave periods, bubble is exposed to waves draw and loading more frequently during the, its entire lifespan uh, compared to the uh, longer period waves. So you see that the bubble um, under this period, the bubble meets wave draw, draw the unloading and the wave uh, draw more often. So those are the results, the main results actually, and the implications and the discussion. Uh, surface waves can reduce the duration of the growth five, five phase of bubbles and the low earlier upward buoyant bubble migration. So um, at higher water depths, waves contribution to expedite bubble growth is relatively small, but at shallow depths, like here, half a meter, it is quite significant, 30%. So, and these issues are connected to actually to the distribution of the organic matter in the water body sediment. If the organic matter is distributed mainly in the littoral zones, waves contribute so substantially to the bubble growth and enhance for these regions. So, for instance, if the organic matter is brought to this shallow depths by the rivers and uh, is, it is remained there, then and it is uh, uh, quite, it could be quite significant contribution of the bubble growth to the enhanced evolution. In contrast, in sites where organic matter is concentrated in the deeper zones, for instance, as in the Lake Kinneret, the slow bubble grows uh, in, in misengenerating sites uh, leads to occurrence of stationary bubbles or gas horizons, uh, despite, and they stay stationary despite the wave action. So with respect to the tides, because tides have a long period, those have a marginal effect on the bubble maturity time. However, the tides can affect migration of already mature stationary bubbles and cause their release um, if there is some amount of uh, bubbles in the gas horizon. So, um, the and then equipment. main conclusion, <laughs> main conclusion from here that the modeling suggests that fastest bubble growth can be predicted when higher amplitude short period waves travel in the shallow water. So this is the main uh, conclusion of this paper. And outlook about the, about the future study. So this outlook is mainly related to coexistence of single bubbles in a bubble community. So in this paper, in, in preparation, a competitive bubble growth is modeled and that takes into account also the bubble, competitive bubble stress interactions and solute field interactions. And second issue is to account for a bubble size distribution in the effective models for the acoustic application of gadget sediment characterization. So to account for different bubble sizes according to the modeling that I just um, described for you uh, and to formulate the effective model for the acoustic uh, gadget sediment characterization. So actually that's it, but in the end, I would like, of course, to thank of all my colleagues and uh, all, all, all my students for their great contribution to all this and other projects on the meat and bubble. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Agina. We do have uh, a little bit of time for questions. We are a little bit over time. Um, 
So I open the podium for people to ask. Somebody? Maybe just. Well, I, have, I actually have uh, many questions because, uh, first of all, Regina, uh, this was fantastic. All the new stuff with the anisotropy and the uh, periodicity is fantastic. Uh, great to see the, the progress. Really interesting stuff. Uh, really enjoyed your talk. I, I really have uh, uh, many questions. Maybe maybe I will uh, touch uh, on on uh, two questions. One is about the anisotropy. In the anisotropy case, you varied the strength of the sediment in the profile, but did you also vary the porosity in the profile? Uh, no. First of all, uh, 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 responding to the beginning of your uh, question. This you, I would also like to say to thank my co-authors in the, all these new papers that uh, did a great uh, work, uh, actually, and contributed very significantly to all these issues. And specifically, uh, answering your question, the single stuff that was uh, inserted is the anisotropy ratio. That is the fracture toughness in the vertical direction over the fracture toughness in the horizontal direction, the, the ratio. And that means that if you have here, one is the isotropic case, and those are the anisotropic case, that means that this shows you the easier fracturing in the horizontal direction which is clearly related to the alignment of uh, clay particles, which are described in the, in the literature as transversely anisotropic, okay? So it is uniform, so it is uniform medium with the, with the clay sheets, basically. It's, it's clay we sheets. Uh, uh, we don't consider it like clay sheets. This is a macroscopic approach. Okay, you just you just uh, you just state that you have uh, fracturing uh, this anisotropy ratio defined as here, and then actually as bubbles evolve in the isotropic case on the maximal fracturing and the heads. And in all the anisotropic case, the fracturing is at the equator. And then this time it migrates towards the head. And when it reached the head, bubble closes the tail. And if it has an absolute, it starts moving upwards. This is the physics. Yeah, the other the other question I have is about the dynamic uh, the dynamic the pressure changes. Um, you're saying that the low frequency pressure changes um, do not do not apply. But uh, where is this uh, scale uh, dependence of the pheno phenomena coming from? Why do a tide wave, for example? not affect while high frequency waves do affect. Where is it coming from physically? Okay, yeah, this is actually from this picture. So uh, as often uh, the bubble meets wave drum, as more it would exp experience the multiple in intensive fracture. If it meets less often, then this multiple fracturing would be less, uh, less uh, in, uh, would influence less. So let's say if you have, uh, let's say some like here, for instance, 
uh, if you have some period of the bubble grows, okay, if bubble during this period meets the, the unloading at the wave trough 10, 10 times, that it would grow faster than if it would meet it once, okay? Because all these phenomena occur at the wave trough, at the unloading at the wave trough, which actually enhance, increases, produces its faster growth, increases in surface, its surface area, and also increases the diffusive flux. You didn't consider the, the travel of the pressure pools to the different depths. Uh, you know, this is, this, uh, this is quite uh, shallow, at shallow depths. This yes. bubble, and this project, they are glue at the shallow depths. So it is not... Right. No, it would be interesting to consider the, the travel of the pressure depths and, and, and look how this uh, effect will impact uh, deep water uh, bubbles or deeper bubbles, because uh, this is interesting. Very interesting. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Like I said, I have many more questions, but it's really too much, too much for now. You, you are welcome to come and to ask. OK, somebody else? Well, considering the time, I, I suggest people that have questions maybe approach directly Regina, because we are far beyond um, our time. So thank you again, Regina, for the beautiful talk. OK, I thank really, you very much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and next week we're moving to Portugal. So stay tuned. Okay, see you everybody. Okay, okay. see you. Thank you very much.